my research focuses on low power sensor interfaces and I'm particularly interested in biomedical applications of these low power sensor interfaces. One example of uh, biomedical application is cochlear implants. The reason why low power circuits are necessary for a cochlear implant is because they are small in size and they have to be partially implanted and partially worn by the user. So whatever electronics that are in this device must be very, very efficient in the way they consume power. There are 30 million Americans who are currently suffering from sensory neural hearing loss. And those who have got very severe sensory neural hearing loss have no recourse other than to use a cochlear implant. What a cochlear implant is, it's a neuroprosthetic device that is placed inside the user's skull and it captures audio signals and then converts them into electrical signals, bypasses the ear and the damaged cochlea, and then directly stimulates the auditory nerve. Now, cochlear implants, along with deep brain stimulators, are actually one of the most successful neuroprosthetic devices to date. But there is one confounding factor that they face, and that is that in busy auditory environments, that is, in, a, in an environment where there's a lot of background noise, users of cochlear implants find it difficult to have intelligible conversations. And this is a problem that has been faced by cochlear implant users and designers for the past 30 years. We are at the stage today where we, we know enough about psychoacoustics and about signal processing that it's actually possible to separate a sound of interest from one that is not so interesting. The problem here is that the current signal processing schemes that we use require huge amounts of computational power. So the idea of my research is to take the cochlear implant and to couple it with the user's brain. And the user just has to think that he wants to listen to say Bob versus Alice. And what the cochlear implant would do is it would pick up on this attention, this change in focus of attention, and redirect itself towards Bob, for example, and enhance Bob's voice, and then suppress all of the background noise. People who are into neuroscience and neurophysiology know that neurons compute in a highly nonlinear fashion. On the other hand, most computational mechanisms that are man-made actually linear. And the reason why they are basically is because linear computation is much more mathematically tractable than nonlinear computation. So in, in a nutshell, it's easier for us to understand linear computation than it is to understand nonlinear computation. Now, because this is a departure from the traditional way of digital computation, it's that there are currently no tools and no standard methodologies for actually doing this sort of work. And what I'm doing, and what I'm doing with uh, the Newcom Award, is to develop new computational tools for exploring the space of nonlinear dynamics.